Hola, mi amigo. Como está? We are live from El Mexico for episode 13 of the Daniel Dargan podcast. Yes, I'm wearing shorts in case you think I'm in the nip. Uh, yeah, we're in Mexico. Tulum, to be precise. Myself, the big bad wolf, Tony. Uh, we've been traveling for three weeks now. When I say traveling, we've been setting up shop, working for a week, and then moving. So, I wanted to take you through the trip so far, some of the insights, some of the lessons that I've taken uh, from it. And it's been such a good trip. It's been insane. The last time I've been away this long, probably Bali last year, and we just stayed in the same spot the whole time. So this has been slightly different. And honestly, it just opened my eyes to the world so much. It's made me realize how much of the world that I need to see and how many amazing cultures there are out there, which, you know, if I stayed in that small bubble of Temple Patrick in Ireland, which I absolutely love, I would never be exposed to this. I would never be exposed to meeting such incredible people. Uh, so yeah, firstly, we went to, we decided we're gonna go to America for a month. And the reason why we actually decided we wanna go there, uh, we, yeah, like firstly, I just love Americans. Like I work with quite a lot of Americans and their energy is insane. They're so charismatic, their charisma, it's just insane. So I wanted to go out there. That's that, That's what initially drew me to that. Uh, and then of course, work-wise as well. Like I wanted to, you know, I wanted to get the name. I wanted to get the message out there to America. And I uh, suppose what better way to do that is to go out there and start posting content in America and hope that that pushes it. So that was the initial idea, firstly. And you know, the beauty of being able to work online is that I can take my laptop and we can work anywhere. It doesn't really matter as long as I have Wi-Fi, as long as there's as long as there's a decent gym, it really doesn't matter. There's a flyer which is pen red in front of my face. It's gonna get it in a minute. It's bro, it's a bad day. It's a bad day to mess with me on episode 13, bro. Uh, but yeah, so we decided to go to Austin firstly. So we booked a month, so I think it was like 25th, 26th to the 26th. Uh, so we fly I fly home on the 26th of April here. Uh, but yeah, Austin, that was the first problem. Like, why Austin? I don't know. I listened to a lot of Chris Williamson, so the Modern Wisdom podcast. Obviously, he's from England. He moved to Austin. I know Joe Rogan lives there. And it's just, apparently, it's very up and coming. But the people are so nice. They are the nicest people on two feet. Uh, but when we got there, we stayed out in the suburbs. We didn't stay like in the inner, inner, inner city. We stayed out in the suburbs where it was close to a decent gym. And personally, like, I had a really busy work week that way. And we probably didn't see as much as Austin as we would have liked, but that again, that was my own doing. The fact that you know I had such a busy, in I had a, a week where I was taking on clients, so it's a busy intake week. But that's how it was. It was still great, like you know, we still smashed gym every day. We lay out the sun. We met some insane people, uh, and then on the last day, we went to a place called Barton Springs. So it's. Uh, Oh my God, it's unbelievable. So it's natural spring water, there's diving boards, there's massive greenery, grass areas where people are chilling in the sun, there's speakers, insane. I felt like it was something out of a movie. And I'm probably not alone when I, I'm just making sure that's recording, it is. I'm probably not alone when I say that somebody from Ireland going out to America, it's like what you watch in the movies. Like when you grow up, you watch the American movies, it is like that and the people, are exactly like that. When I was going to the 7-Elevens, I was recording, I was filming, and they're probably thinking, what is a virgin doing? It's like if somebody came into the spa back home in Temple Patrick and was filming around, I would be like, Mate, have, you, are you, have you got something wrong with you? have got a little a bit of that tiz, I'm like. But I loved Austin, it was insane. And then from there, we went to, where we go? So yeah. We had no idea. We booked the Airbnb for seven days and we just wanted to see if Austin was actually going to suit us, if Austin was going to be a good spot, if it was going to be, there was going to be enough there. And, you know, we got the cowboy hats. We, uh, <laughs> we wanted to go to, is it Honky Tonk? It's like a road, it's like, it's Honky Tonk dancing. So it's basically like country western music. Everybody's got the cowboy hats, the snakeskin boots, and they're all dancing. So we probably needed to go to more like, more rogue side of Texas for that, probably up in Dallas. Uh, Austin is a lot more liberal, it's a lot more left, uh, it's a lot more modernized, I would say. So yeah, it didn't really get as much of that, and we were gonna go out one of the nights, but see, to be honest, everything doesn't pick up until like 12 or 1, 1 a.m. We're in bed for half eight, nine, so we're gonna go out this week, right? We said we're gonna go out, and I think that's, a, that's the struggle sometimes that you face when, you know, you're, you do see yourself as a disciplined individual and you're working to build a business. And, you know, especially t Tony and myself, we're both doing that. 
sometimes you can feel inclined to you know always get into bed early always uh, make sure you're you're up and feeling fresh to smash the gym the next day and you know i do think there is beauty in actually just being able to say oh, fuck it we're just going to go in here and we're going to have a few beers and we're going to see where the night takes us i think there's so much beauty in that and i think the spontaneity of that I miss sometimes so you know we actually spoke about that the other day and we're gonna go out this weekend uh, in Mexico in Tulum and we're gonna let it rip and we're gonna enjoy ourselves so yeah I'm looking forward to it I've had a few good few beers in ages but I personally think when it comes to hangovers I do think it is a lot of down to what you just do the next day obviously yes of course if you're smashing 20 beers you're you're in a coma you're 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 gone so like but I think the next day if you make sure number one that you, well, I would drink two liters of water before bed, right? I would bang a hydration tablet. That is the key. Set up until you have two liters nailed. Then the next day, I would make sure that you don't go on your phone uh, for at least the first two, three hours of the day. I would get outside and I would make sure that you expose your eyes to sunlight. If you can, bonus tip, cold water. That's going to bring you around. Um, but yeah, that's, that's absolutely key. And a big reason why people get it so tight when they're actually, when they, when they are home, hungover, it's because they're so dopamine depleted. Like the alcohol takes around 72 hours to withdraw from your system. So when it's withdrawn, you are, your dopamine uh, reward system is just going to be absolutely floored. And that's why when you're hungover, you're going to experience, uh, you're going to experience a low mood. You're going to experience low drive. You're going to uh, experience uh, an increase of stress and anxiety. So what you can do to counteract that is actually going outside for a walk with no phone, no social media, uh, getting into a cold plunge or smashing a gym session, that's gonna bring that dopamine level back to baseline. And what that means is it's just gonna bring you back to your baseline mood and, and stress levels. So yeah, I actually got some notes down. Just, just a few things. You know what, see, see when you're doing these podcasts on your own, like when you're, when you're, working, when you're doing a podcast with somebody else, it's the conversation so, it flows so easily, but when you're actually having a monologue with yourself, the, like the, if I'm pl if I've planned what I want to talk about in the podcast, it can be so easy to forget those things because I just get lost in my trail of thought. So we went from Austin, uh, and we we just didn't know where we we're gonna hit next. Wolfie's coming downstairs, uh, but Wolfie actually had a connection in San Fran. So this guy called Marcus Philly, uh, he was a CrossFit Games athlete. Uh, yeah, Wolfie said about. He actually contacted Wolfie about doing a collab. So yeah, he was in San Fran. We booked the flight to San Fran. Off we went. And I think the best part about this is that we had no expectation of what San Fran was going to be like. And it was honestly one of the best weeks of my life, if I'm being honest. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. When you have your expectations set so high, you're almost setting yourself up to fail. It's like, do you remember back when you were in school and you're leaving the, your school leaving do or your school formal? It was always meant to be like, you, you thought about it for a year. It was gonna be the best night ever. And then it was never really as good as you thought it was. It was never really lived up to it. Why is that? It's just because your expectations were so high. Uh, and when your expectations align with reality, it's so much easier to accept the experience. So yeah. Go into it, no expectations. That's, the, that's, that's what I'm taking from that. Yeah, well, we went to San Francisco, went in Rome, red Mustang, convertible, and I made a balls up with, I made a balls up with a booking. So we set off that morning and we thought, all right, we're going to San Fran, Golden Gate Bridge, we're gonna gun it and get a Mustang. So I went on and booked it. Anyway, we got off the flight, Wolfie waited in queue. We got to the front and there was no Tony McAlevey on it. I put it in his name. There's no Tony McAlevey on it. So they checked it in my name. There's no Daniel on it. And then we got the book it up and she said, yeah, that's for next week. And I was like, oh no. So we spent all that money and spunked it. There's literally nothing we could have done, nothing we could do about it. And then the worst part about it was they didn't have any Mustangs left. So we were just gonna have to go for I don't know, for first world problem, right? But that was part of the experience, especially for the content too. Like it, it makes it so much more funny. So yeah, we went to the next place down the the next uh, service uh, desk down the line, and yeah, we got it. So it was insane. It honestly made the holiday. So we stayed in Sausalito. So it's a wee bit. It's like. I was gonna say 20 minutes. It's like five minutes north of uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and see flying past, see, oh my God, you see people cycling past it. Get a car convertible and f oh my God, that made the, that's a core memory. I'll never forget that to the day I die. And you know, Wolfie and I spoke about that and we're, we're gonna look back at that in years to come, flying down the Golden Gate Bridge with the roof down, 
tunes blasting. What do we have? What was the, what was the memory? Yeah, so, you know, a thousand miles. And I need you. And I miss you. That's the song in the core memory that's going to be locked in there forever. And I want to continue to live my life like that. And you might say, well, like what, Daniel? I want to continue to live my life where I make decisions based off how good the story's going to be. And I think we could all... If we could all take 1% of that, our life's gonna be so much more fulfilled and so much more exciting. You know, when we'd actually decided to go to Bali last year, I wasn't sure if, you know, it was quite last minute. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go um, because like work was loads on with work. And you know how you just get set in your own wee comfort zone and you think, ah, oh, nah, like I put it off. You know, I would have had a habit of doing that. But asking yourself which decision brings about the most opportunity and what decision's gonna give, what decision's gonna tell the best story down the line. Because at the end of the day, that's all we have, right? We have the present day and we have the memories that we look back on. And if you've no memories, then, you know, what, what's this all for then? You know, what's this all for? So sometimes it's getting uncomfortable with that. Same with America. Like, I didn't know what to expect from America, but it was fun. It was insane. I absolutely loved it. Uh, so, yeah, we met with, with Marcus, uh, Tony and Marcus. They recorded for a couple of days. And then I actually jumped in one of the reels with them, uh, which was interesting. You know, I did, just didn't think that was going to happen. So that was cool. So... That'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. We'd actually done the, well, yeah, I, I, I'll leave that as a surprise for you. But yeah, Marcus was an absolute legend. And one thing that he said, which really stuck with me, uh, was, you know, how surface level people can be. We had a really in-depth conversation. And uh, he actually mentioned about a conversation he had with a friend. And uh, his friend said, hey, Marcus, how are you? And he says, oh, man, I've got X, Y, Z going on. He said, every day people ask that question, how are you? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm good. But if that's not how you actually are, then, you know, I, I understand. Then there's no issue with sometimes saying that, especially if it's, a, if it's a close friend, if it's a relative. And we get caught in that surface level conversation so much that I think that's why people maybe struggle so much nowadays because they're never offloading or they're never actually releasing that valve and just telling you, telling you actually how they feel. And I'm just navigating my own thoughts as I'm having them here. But I think it's essential for every single person to go traveling at some stage. And you know, you, you might say, oh, well, I've got loads on at the moment. You are the youngest you're ever gonna be. You have the least amount of commitments you're ever gonna have. Because realistically, when we get older, we're just gonna have more commitments. And for me right now, yes, I've got a girlfriend. Uh, I was that, that's, that, that's it, obviously my family are back home as well, but uh, I don't have any other strings attached. I don't have, uh, I don't have a house, I don't have a mortgage. I have nothing of that sort. So it's so, I, I understand that it's easy for me to say, but I also understand that when I get older, I'm not gonna have, it's never gonna be as convenient as it is today. So I wanted to ask yourself, what have you got to lose in doing that? You know, what it's made me realize traveling is, the people are so happy with so little. You know, I've seen that in Bali so much, and you know, I see that in Mexico, more so in Bali. But people have so little, yet they're so happy. You know, I actually wrote down this quote, which I've seen uh, online, and I absolutely love that. Slick operator, Andy, with your big MacBook. There is nothing that changes your brain wiring, like seeing people in another country who don't prioritize or have all the things your country deems as important for happiness but they have the kind of joy that changes the energy of a room when they walk in. But that changed the game for me. That absolutely changed the game for me. Never gonna have, it's never gonna be as convenient as it is today. So what have you got to lose? So yeah, San Fran, it was a movie. Even though we, we stayed in Sausalito and we had an unbelievable house and it was ironic that we had such an incredible gaff, the bog, and again, if you're not familiar with the phrase, the bog, the toilet, We'd absolutely, like, I'm straight up here, we'd absolutely wreck the bog. We wrecked, we, 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 Tony said we, I wrecked the bog. Mate, it was a joint effort. <laughs> it was a joint effort. Anyway, so we had, like this, it was completely clogged and we had to resort to going down to this port loo every single day. So yeah, I know we, th we were out here with the Red Mustang and the Lethal Gaff looking over San Fran. Uh, Thinking we were thinking we were slick, but we're actually just tripping down to the port of Lou to rack the bog. So yeah, how, I mean Instagram versus reality, right? 
It's definitely Wolfie. It was definitely Wolfie. For anyone on camera, Dorgan loves dog in a toilet. <laughs> we, uh, just so you know, we're also in Mexico. It looks great, but our interest is off now till at least four or six o'clock at the earliest. Is it? Back, so I am going to this coffee shop called Rita Moore. You can meet me there because you're going to get fuck all here. Uh, oh my days, man. You're not getting signal here either, so. Yeah, no. Oh, well, I have to meet you. Breed where are you going to? I'm going to go there initially, but once you hit there, anyway, you have a wife so. <sighs> Great. We're living the dream. First world problem, baby. So, yeah, we're in Tulum at the moment. Plan of action. We're staying here till the, well, I'm staying here till the 26th. And I actually didn't know what to expect from Tulum. Wolfie told me about uh, how the police are dodgy here. He told me some of the stories that, you know, they just, and actually quite a few other people mentioned to me as well, that when you're, if you're flying down the street, the police will literally just wave you in and just, demand money off you and <laughs> I said that to my mum and she near shit herself but again as long as they ain't the cartel I'm happy with it I'm good so we're literally just getting up every single day same same routine we're getting up half four or five o'clock smashing work gymming and yeah like this gaff is it's this gaff's a lot bigger than what the was the one was in San Francisco and you know as much as close as you are with somebody no matter how close you are I feel I still believe that you need your own space like you need your own space even when I'm with Tia as much as Tia will say otherwise I need my own space <laughs> so it's it's good that, it's good that we have that <laughs> you agree oh, yeah. yeah well <laughs> you need more than one you know, yeah, we need more. Than, yeah, we need more than one ball. So, I, but I honestly would definitely love to go traveling on my own as well. I think that would be an eye-opening experience. You know, I think there's nothing more vulnerable than being launched than being turfed into a uh, culture or turfed into an environment where the only like the only network and it, it, it's down to you. You, you don't have a safe space. Like when we went to Wim Hof, there were six of us. It was so easy to network and to communicate because there was six of us. There was a big group of us. Whereas I think if you're on your own, there's so much more vulnerability in that. Uh, but Honestly, I've been so grateful for this experience and Wolfie and I spoke about that, how mad it is that we have the opportunity to actually come out here and do this and work from here. And, you know, I made a video last week on my Instagram and I said that this all started from just posting videos on social media, then trying to help other people and uh, give out value. And uh, there was people in the early days that would have chastised, they would have ridiculed and how different life would have looked if I had listened to those people, and I'm sure it's the same for Wolfie as well, there would have been people chirping in and how different life would have looked for him. You know, and there really is a parallel universe, in my opinion, for every single person. And where you end up, what universe you end up in is down to the choices that you take day to day. Like, God knows what I could be doing right now. But realistically, are you going to settle for a life that you don't want to live for a little bit of fear, are you going to be okay with that? Because I know that it can be uncomfortable. I know it can be difficult. But what's more difficult is getting to 50, 60, 70 years of age and looking back and realize, oh, what could have been? I could have been that guy. And in my opinion, that would suck. That's not for me. Chris Williamson says, uh, he talks about this idea in a, uh, one of his newsletters. He says, most people don't even like themselves. So why would you care about the opinions of other people? He says, you wouldn't trust somebody's judgment on strength training if they weren't strong. And these people don't know you and they don't even like themselves. So their opinion is completely invalid. And I absolutely love that. And I want you to ask yourself the question is, what would my life look like if I wasn't afraid? What would my life look like if I was completely fearless? Would you start posting videos? Would you start running about the local gym with a Rey Mysterio mask on? Like, are, damn right you would, damn right. You know, but again, whatever that is, if that's you starting, if that's you starting a business, who cares? Like I have some one of our clients. She's actually shout out Rebecca. I don't know if you're listening to this. Uh, you 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 better be listening to this. Anyway, Rebecca is an absolute legend. She's been one of my clients for about eighteen months, maybe longer now. And when she came to me initially, she was working in. She had a corporate job. She worked for pretty sure it was Uber Eats. Uh, but she also had an Instagram page where she had maybe like 20k on Instagram and I could just tell Rebecca had that hunger but there was a lot of fear from 
there was a lot of like ex there was a lot of fear from uh, the external people in her life that were you know put, not putting pressure on her but edging her towards the societal norm of getting the good stable corporate job but she wasn't satisfied with that and she knew that like staring down the barrel, barrel the next 30 40 years she, she was not going to be happy with herself but her friends or family may have been happy and she went traveling she came back and she went all in with it and i think within six months seven months she her instagram went up from like 20k 30k maybe this would be a bit, a bit longer maybe 10 months so it just went up to now 100 i think it's 180,000 followers and she's releasing an ebook uh shortly she does like recipe videos she's un unbelievable and she would always laugh at me at the the food that i eat and she says like you eat like a nine-year-old uh, i'm sure wolfie would agree wouldn't you he would, he would he would agree he would agree um, <laughs> but yeah again just a, a prime example they're always like i'm pretty like wolf wolf he said something to me maybe a year or two ago and he says you only face resistance upstream and it's so true if you don't want to be criticized say nothing do nothing be nothing oh okay. is it I don't know what fish it is, but there's a fish like a salmon that swims upstream and all the other wee shitty fish swim downstream. Don't be a shitty fish that swims downstream. Yeah, I reckon they're like, you know the wee ones that look like, I know Nemo's cute, but he's definitely the ones that look like that, where it's like, you want to be the big salmon. Do you know the ones that are jumping up out of the water? Are you a big salmon? Yeah, big silly salmon. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, I'll catch you in a bit. I'll catch you in a bit. So do they say it's going to be off for our heating or electricity's off by the way for till what is it six? Shit, between four and six at earliest. Earliest. Shit. Right. Okay. All right. So I'll. I'm um, in charge, so I brought both plugs. Okay. Because you obviously can't use it. I'll be back for that. Okay. Okay. Right. No worries. Yeah. No, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. Uh, right. Okay. So I kind of literally can't even remember what I was talking about. But yeah. So plan of action. Upstream. Stand it upstream. Don't be a beta, don't be a little fish, don't be a, a Nemo, don't be a virgin. Like, I want you to honestly ask yourself a question. If there was nobody else on this earth, how would you be living today? How would you be living today? And that's been reaffirmed to me on this trip. How much I need to continue leaning into that fear because that's where it's got me to today. And I don't want you to make the same mistake as me in not leaning into that because I've done that for way too long. So plan of action, we're standing to for another two weeks and then I am heading home back to Ireland and then taking my girlfriend out to Bali for her birthday. So I'm still working when I'm away and like my clients, like <laughs> Tony and I always laugh about this. Uh, like my, my clients would say to me, oh, enjoy your holiday. I'm like, man, I'm not on holiday. Like I'm working when I'm away. I don't want people to feel like I'm just going away and I'm doing nothing. But see when we put up on Instagram, like it looks like we're just messed about all day. We're working from like half four till maybe 11, going to the gym and then gym for two hours, filming, going home and then working till maybe four, five, six o'clock. And then we're messing about, you know? So <laughs> Instagram doesn't see that. That wouldn't be interesting for Instagram. So, yeah, any of my guys listening, there you go, there you go. So yeah, head to Bali and then stay out there for two weeks and then I'm coming home and that's gonna be me at Ireland uh, for a good few weeks. But I just wanted to give you the update on where we were at. I felt like I hadn't, yeah, obviously we had Halmy on beforehand and we had the episode with my granny. So things have been, things have been interesting. And for me, if I'm being really honest, like this is out of my comfort zone, is going away traveling with another person for like a prolonged period of time. And I actually spoke to Tony about this uh, one to one when I was in Wim Hof. I said like, I have some sort of commitment issue. I feel like I have, or sorry, I feel like I had. I don't have that anymore. I know like, again, how we talk to ourselves that really dictates our behavior. And I don't like to label or attach anything to myself unless it's for, unless it has a positive connotation. I don't believe there's any benefit to that. Uh, so yeah, I had a commitment issue in my opinion anytime somebody said about going somewhere and maybe if they were driving and i wasn't gonna have uh, agency over when i was going home i would like that would i have no chance that would, i would not be happening <laughs> if the thought of going like the thought of going away initially with wolfie to bali for a month me and somebody else for a month and like there's no escape on that <laughs> 
I, the thought in my head, like no chance. I think this maybe comes back from like to when I was an anxious individual and my default was always to run or to isolate and not have that option terrified me and I'm, I'm, I'm not that individual anymore absolutely not but you still see those tendencies creep in but it's the same as anything those tendencies are always going to creep in but that's when you just need to shut them close and then ask yourself that question is if there's a difficult decision right now what brings about the most opportunity and what's going to give me the best story and then we're going to go with that and there's probably something in your head that you're thinking about and that could be your career that could be a relationship that could be absolutely anything and you might not know what it is that you want to do that's fine. So maybe it's just putting one foot in front of the other um, until you figure out what it is that you want to do. And I've had conversations with quite a lot of people in the, in, in the past few days that they, they, they're lost, they have no direction, and they feel like they're a failure because they haven't got the car, they haven't got the house, they haven't got the mortgage, they haven't got the dog. And they're telling me this at 25, 30, 35 years. I was like, mate, relax. Who said that was, a, who said, that is the idea of success. That's the idea of success in somebody else's eyes, not yours. So you define what that looks like to you, and especially in, the, in a day and age where you know life can be completely different. Like this never existed. Like being able to work from your laptop and travel, like that didn't exist fifty years ago. And I want to decide what my life is. No, I don't want to get married at this age. Table listening and play Marvin's room. Alexa, play Marvin's room. <laughs> but I don't want to get married so early. I don't want to get a house so early. So I want to go and travel and see the world and I want to do all these things. And in my eyes, that's success because I define it. And if somebody's happy with a dog and a more great, that's success in your eyes. So we should stop imposing those ideals on other people and just look at what it means for us. So I will love you and leave you on that note. A quick little update from moi. We're gonna run a pod next week with Wolfie. We're gonna run it back. Anytime we do a podcast, Wolfie and I, we just, it seems to bang. We seem to, it, we just gel very well. You know, we have similar schedule, we similar morals, similar values, and yeah, obviously, we're, we're great friends. Tony was a mentor of mine. He still is a mentor of mine. And yeah, he's done so much for me. He's really helped. He's really completely changed my life. And like, I'm forever grateful for that. And, you know, we just seemed to, we, we got closer and closer as best mates. And uh, yeah, very, very grateful for the friendship that we have. And, you know, he's somebody that I definitely, I grow when I'm around him. And hopefully that's the same vice versa. But those are the kind of individuals that you want to spend your time with. Ask yourself the question, am I better off after I've left this individual's company. If the answer is no, you need to get rid of them. Or at least create some space between you and that individual. So, I would love you to leave you. Big, big love. And as a wise man once said, let's go baby.